Special inbox for the Asus Zenbook UX32 VD. VD stands for very delicious. I should have been your marketing person. We would have been using this for all sorts of delicious things. <laughs> well, I've already ruined the video, so let's go ahead and get started with some questions. Chris M. from Okinawa, Japan. He's uh, written in lots of things. I'm just going to skip to the question, though. Having put your hands on the machine, how would, uh, how would you judge the chassis compared to the unibody of the UX31? Purple people say that it felt weak, flexy, especially the underside had poor fit finish. Um, so the question here really is about the durability of this compared to the UX31. Of course, the UX31 feels solid. It's unibody. So there are two different animals. You buy this one more because it's much faster. You can, you can do stuff with it. You can take the back off. I would not recommend upgrading the UX31 at all. This one you can upgrade. So there are two different machines. Now you also mentioned in here, I'll put this, the question on the screen so everyone else can see, that you want something you can just throw in your backpack and not have to be afraid uh, to carry it, you know, throw it in the backpack and carry it on. Well, I mean, it's yes, yes, yes. It does have the bottom is flexy. It feels like it could use a couple more screws. I don't know, Wendell, what do you think? Um, You've been using it more than I have. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the unibody, the thing with the, the original Zenbook is it felt like a solid wedge of aluminum. Like you pick it up and it's it feels like a solid wedge of aluminum. This one doesn't feel like a solid wedge of aluminum, but it's really not off-putting. I mean, it's really, maybe if you got used to a UX31 and you switched to this, maybe you'd notice it a little more, but you know, coming from a Dell uh, latitude, uh, there's no problem here. Right. Uh, I Unless you're beating this thing up, I don't think you're having any problems because even the internals, they're locked down, everything's nice and secure. So, um, I say I think it's okay to throw in a backpack and take on a, a plane with you, carry it on. Yeah, you might use the envelope that it comes with for a little extra padding because, I mean, I can't imagine being that hard on a Zen book, but... Yeah. Okay. Good question. Next question is from Sam. He said, could you please do a test with Battlefield 3 with 8 gigabytes of RAM? Uh, I would like it if you show both single and multiplayer. Thanks. You can gift me a copy of Battlefield 3. I never purchased Battlefield 3 because of Origin. So I'm very sorry about that. I, I really, really wanted to play Battlefield 3, but I, I could not get over Origin service. I, I um, you know, I had a, a beta copy of that game or something before it came out. Uh, they sent me one, and I was so frustrated with Origin, I didn't even bother. It was that bad. So, very sorry. But I really enjoy the bunny that's in your signature. So, thanks for that. Okay, next one is from Warren and Nancy. Hmm, yes. Did your wife create this account? Or did you create this account? I want to know who I'm talking to here. Is it Warren or Nancy? Or did both of you guys sit down together? You on her lap. You beast. Okay, I uh, saw your video. Tear down. Great. Yada, yada, yada. Thank you. Um, I'm about to do the same, and I was wondering what you think about the uh, Memorite 7mm FTM Plus Slim SSD. That is a great SSD for this. Uh, Memorite 7mm. It fits just fine. Uh, the other thing that you have to make sure of is make sure that the... Uh, this is where the, the SATA plug and the, the power connector are in the right spot, and it is on that one, so you're all good to go on that one. Uh, that's also nice. It uses a Micron uh, chips inside and uh, Sandforce, and it's really, really fast. So I've got no problems with that one at all. Highly recommended drive. Next question is, uh, is it possible to add the Thunderbolt port and controller on this Ultrabook as an upgrade? No. It's not. No Thunderbolt. None. There's not even a spot on the motherboard if you wanted to solder something. There's nothing there. You can't do it. I'm sorry. Nope. Not even PCI Express. Maybe if you took out, like, uh, the the um, wireless in, you could solder something in there with Thunderbolt. What do you think, Wendell? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's just the... That's the only sort of mini PCI Express slots, the one used by the little wireless in card. So if you took that out, you may be able to hack something in, but nah, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, that, that's... I'm going to go with no on that. Okay, Grant. Grant is asking, uh, he wants just to know some more information about RAM types you can use and SSD types you can use. So let's break it down for you. Uh, the RAM, as long as it's above 1600 MHz, you, of course it has to be a DDR3 SODIM slot. SODIM for the win. That doesn't even rhyme. Uh, and it's for the cast latency, you're going to want to get 11 or better. Anything less than that is going to slow down the entire machine because what's in there is that speed. And um, we Let, used to Less be being larger. Yeah, yes. <laughs> a larger number. Yes. Uh, the, yeah, people don't know that. Cast latency, um, the lower the better. 
because it's latency. So you want a less, lower latency, le less milliseconds, my friends. So like a cast of twelve would be bad because then it'll run at like thirteen thirty three instead of sixteen hundred. Yeah, so you want cast eleven ten or nine. You're not probably not going to see. Well, it is smaller memory. You may find some that's like eight or something for so dim. Yeah, and twelve years from now, when somebody's watching this video, like you know, I mean, yeah, they might have like cast latency like eight, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, and then the SSDs, you want to make sure that they're lined up just like the original drive and less than seven, seven millimeters. So make sure that the power connector and the SATA connector are on that side. If they're laying down flat, you'll see the, the screws there. Just like that, make sure they're smaller than seven millimeters, like the memo right. If they're not smaller, as long as you can take them apart and uh, you know remove like the top of the case, they should work. Just like we did in the video. So. If you haven't seen the video yet, why are you watching this one? Next one is from Alexi. The question is, what RAM does it have embedded uh, which cannot be removed? What are the specs? Uh, what RAM can be added in the highest possible specs? I think I just answered that, the 1600 megahertz. Uh, you're probably not going to get much better. You can install anything that's bigger than that, as long as it's a DDR3 uh, SO DIMM. That'll work. Uh, what was the other part of his question? The specs of the embedded RAM. We use TPU-Z. I don't know. Maybe we need to hop in some forums or out. Maybe I'll, I'll call. I'll call Asus. I'm serious. I'll call Asus. I, I got some friends over there. Yeah, CPU Z. Like normally, there's a there's a little SPD EEPROM on on the RAM chips, and you can read that, and it's it'll give you the timings and some other stuff. Yeah, CPU Z can't see the onboard RAM for some reason, so we we couldn't read the little EEPROM to figure out what it was. But it seems to be some kind of DDR3 1600. All right. Uh, last part of his question: What's the story with single double channel memory? I've been getting a lot of questions about this because, you know, I said it really doesn't work with dual channel, but it kind of does. The, the Intel has the flex memory technology, uh, which basically, um, you know how this works better than I do. It, well, it's got, I mean, you're going to get a little bit of a performance hit because you've got, it, like, if you put the 8 gig in there, which is what we've, we've done, mm -hmm. this is running with 10 gigs of RAM now total, um, you're going to get a little bit of a performance hit on the reads and writes. Um, because even though it's sort of kind of quasi dual channel, the fact of the matter is you've still got two gigs worth of data going to one chip and eight gigs of data going to the other chip. So it's not, I mean, there's not enough physical hardware there down yeah, to get it. Yeah, fully synchronized. Yeah, yeah. Well, you get some benefit of a dual channel like performance, but it's not really, you know, there is a negligible uh, performance penalty for that and we've got some memory benchmarks where you can see that so right in most gaming you're not going to notice any difference between having extra ram and, and 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 having less ram however if you're using something like adobe premiere and you're you know or, or maybe an editing program or something like that after effects i don't know those programs you will see a performance hit with less ram even though the dual channel is in effect uh, and that's because you need a lot of ram for those it's basically like trying to cram too much stuff onto a small desk you know what i mean that's really what, what happens. So by adding the extra RAM, you're you're increasing the size of your desk. And just think about like think about this physically. How fast can you move things on and off a desk? If, if it's much bigger, it'll be much easier. So more RAM, better for uh, when you're doing more stuff, multitasking and editing and that sort of thing. You have something to add to that, or matched pairs? I mean, generally matched pairs will always perform better. But right. it's not. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not really anything that you need to worry about. But you know, it might cost you a frame or two. Right. So. But and you're usually usually using things for multitasking and multi monitors and all kinds of yeah. your power users, so you wanted the extra RAM to be able to do more stuff. Yeah, four gig ain't gonna cut it. Yeah, you gotta do more stuff. But if you're only doing one or two things at a time, four gig's fine. Next question, Manuel from Spain. What's going on, Manuel? Wish I was over there. In beautiful Europe right now, it is way too hot in America. Way too evil. Is it possible to upgrade the model UX thirty two V D R four hundred? Uh, yes, that one is the Euro model. I've been seeing that one pop up in videos from Germany and that sort of thing, and people are upgrading it. There's all kinds of things you can do to it. It's very much the same machine, and you can do the upgrades. Uh, do you recommend to do the SSD upgrade for gaming? Is there much difference having this upgrade? Uh, yes and no. You will see a difference when you're loading levels and that sort of thing, of course, uh, when you're going from one territory to another. Uh, a lot of games, you won't see much performance difference at all in the actual gameplay, uh, especially the games that... Um, that don't have to do any loading with skyrim and games like that that are really big and you're outside running from one territory to the other whenever you hit one of the spots that it loads the you know the rest of the territory over here well you may see a little bit of a, a hit because it's loading stuff from a hard drive but it'll stutter for a few seconds and then you'll resume regular gameplay so i will never have a 
a mechanical hard drive for this kind of thing ever again just because when you've gotten used to an SSD, a mechanical hard drive seems like 1986. <laughs> it really does. Um, do you know if the Samsung SSD 830 fits well uh, on it? I believe he said, I think it's exactly 7 millimeters thick. Well, it's 7.11 millimeters according to the internet. I, I don't have one of those drives. I've got a different uh, hard drive over here we're playing with. It should squeeze right in. So it should be just fine. Yeah, theoretically, Asus has a has an SKU model that includes a 256 SSD, but I haven't spotted it in the wild for yeah. this. I mean, it, Asus really needs to get their stuff together. And yeah, you can look for, look for different SKUs. There's going to be different SKUs with this model. There may be one with an SSD coming out really soon, but not when I made the original video. Uh, the RAM, uh, the RAM have to be SO dim. Any speeds? Yes, it does have to be SO dim. Um, you want it to be at least 1600 megahertz or better and uh, cast latency of 11 or uh, well, a lower number than that. I am so sorry, dude. Sweden sounds awesome, but I'm not gonna be able to pronounce your name. Van Ling, Van Ligge. I, I don't know of the, it's got the umlaut over the A. Van Linga. Van Linga. This question here, he wants to know if we um, did our review with the SSD upgrade and with the eight, eight gigabytes of RAM. Yes, we upgraded it with the SSD, but we were using four gigabytes of RAM for all of the tests, so it really won't affect the frame rate that much. It'll be just like using the hard drive that came, I mean, the, the, the RAM that it came with. I haven't, I haven't actually had a chance to do a lot of gaming with it, but you know, being stuck at an airport or something like that, it's totally going to uh, fill the hours. All right, he also says he's not comfortable with taking apart a brand new computer, build his own computers, but uh, this is an ultra book and he'd rather not poke around. Um, and he also wants to know if he did do the upgrade, would it void the warranty? The only warranty sticker that we saw was on the heat pipe, right above the, uh, it was right above the CPU, right? Yep. So what we did did not void the warranty. Just make sure, you know, if something goes wrong and you need to like take it back, just keep the original drives, don't throw them out or whatever. So that way, if you actually have to, you can put the original drive and the original RAM back in, but that's not gonna void your warranty. Yeah, I suspect if you call Asus, they're going to want you to put their hard drive and their RAM back in it to troubleshoot it, which is a completely reasonable expectation. And, you know, surely you've got some nerd friends that could help you install some upgrades in your new Zenbook. Uh, and, and then he also asked about Diablo 3. He wants to know about Diablo, Diablo 3. Is it going to be about the same without the upgrade? Uh, uh, it should be, yeah. Yeah, the frame rate should be about the same without the upgrade. Yeah, playing Diablo 3, it, it, when you're getting mobbed really bad, it, it does... The frame rate's not all that great, so I turned the settings down a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's still totally playable and it's still good for filling the hours. Or you can put fireworks up your butt. That's what they do in America <laughs> when they can't fill the hours. <laughs> the boys just couldn't fill the hours and put fireworks up their butt. All right, next question is from Mark. He says, uh, do you know how much RAM uh, this can handle? I'm paraphrasing these. I hope that's okay. 10 gigabytes is what we have in there. If you find a 16 gigabyte stick, it's going to cost you a fortune and it may or may not work. I suspect that it probably wouldn't work, but I'd be glad to try it. Yeah, if someone wants to send one. Is the pre-installed version of Windows 7 32 bits or 64 bits? Uh, it's going to be different depending on the different SKUs. Just take a look. Make, I mean, when you're purchasing this, you're going to see Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Professional, 64 bit. So when you're purchasing it, just take a look and see what's installed. Could you compare the UX32VD to the UX31A's thickness by taking a picture from the side uh, of one of the Ultrabooks on top of the other? Yes, I would, I would love to do that for you. As a matter of fact, I will do this for you as soon as you purchase the UX31 and send it to me so I can do that. Because I don't have all that stuff just laying around, dude. I'm not rich either. Excuse Asus, me. are you listening? <laughs> Asus, these guys want to see if there's one guy, one guy on the internet wants to see this picture. One person. Asus, do you care enough to make that sale? <laughs> They're going to buy it. An Asus, either way you go. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Next question from Michael. Okay, he's about to order a Zenbook Prime UX31A. However, he just watched this review and now he's thinking about this one. So, the questions. Uh, nice upgrade. Does this void the warranties? No, we've already said that. Do you know if the UX31A can have the same RAM upgrade uh, or be upgraded to 8 gigabytes? Maybe you'll do that with a factory, but I wouldn't want to take one of those apart. Yeah, I don't think that it's, it doesn't have the same upgradability. Um, yeah, those are, those are more akin to like a MacBook Air. And the MacBook Air is, like, notorious for not being upgradable. I would not mess with that thing. I really wish that those, the, the 31s, had 8 gigs. 8 gigs should be an option. I don't know why it's not. It makes no sense. Yeah, it really doesn't. Asus? 
Come on, skew up an 8 gig. Let's do it. Next one from Thomas. I like this one. I was wondering if the HDD you guys took out of the computer contained the 24 gigabyte SSD uh, that was part of the hybrid hard drive, or if the 25 gigab gigabyte SSD uh, was soldered to the motherboard somewhere. This is not a hybrid drive. This is just a 5400 speed mechanical drive. Uh, under the hood here, there's a 32 gigabyte SSD drive that uh, the, the read is 500 and the write is like 150 yep. megabytes per second. That's right on board. Eight gigabytes of that are used for like system backup or whatever. And 24 gigabytes of that are used for like caching and page files and all that sort of stuff. It comes with uh, it comes with special ASUS software, which is actually I think from Diskeeper Corporation. Mm -hmm. That's called like Express Cache, and so it just caches your frequently used stuff. The other trick that ASUS did was they partitioned the hard drive, uh, and so that the C partition is very small, and that keeps the uh, access latency on the mechanical hard drive lower. So they really pulled out all the stops to try to make the hardware as fast as possible without you know having it be true SSD. Now here's the cool thing. So suppose you put the SSD in there, you take out the hard drive, you still have that 32 gigabytes of flash on board, and you can do stuff with it. Because your next question here is, um, that, uh, you know, I, I responded to him. He said, "So if Windows is installed on the SSD, then why would you need to, uh, to partition it and install it on the SSD um, that replaced the HDD?" You wouldn't. 32 gigs is awfully small, though. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you can have your your programs program files folder on the S SSD and not on on the inboard, uh, have your programs folder on the SSD and not on the embedded flash, but yeah, it'll work just fine. You can install Linux on it. Uh, I've seen Windows 7 installations that have a lot of crap in the Windows side-by-side -side folder and like Office. And yeah, they can get awfully bloated. Yeah, it's going to be bigger than, like Windows by itself will be bigger than 30 gigs in some configurations. Yeah, I probably would not recommend Windows. I mean, you could do it. Uh, you'd be better off doing Linux on that, dual booting. Just go grab Zorn. If you like Mac, go grab Zorn. If you like Windows 7, go grab Zorn. If you like Ubuntu, don't. Get Debian. You'll be much happier. <laughs> Next question is from Martin. Uh, Martin says, do you uh, have to do anything to discourage slash ground the machine before swapping out parts? Write right on the form that's important to disconnect the battery uh, fully and then press the power button down to discharge before installing a new hard drive. Is there any merit to this? Yeah, I mean, you should do that. Yeah, we didn't do it. <laughs> just make sure you're grounded. I mean, touch some metal that's grounded before you do this. Do not, do not do anything under the hood of a computer wearing wool socks on a carpeted floor with a cat on your head. You redditing over there? Alex asks, does it have an extra MSATA port to put an MSATA SSD in? No, it does not. You could take out the wireless in card again, uh, and then you have an extra PCI Express thing that you can mount an MSATA device to. Don't do that. Yeah, that, I don't even know if we could cram all that in there. It's just stupidity. So apparently everyone wants an MSATA and a Thunderbolt ASUS. Okay, Simon says, Hello, is there any chance you could use the Samsung A30 series SSD because that one is only seven millimeters thick? And which RAM would you guys go with? Well, we've answered this question a lot, but I wanted to include you, Simon, because so I could say Simon says. Yeah, the A30, as long as it's uh, seven millimeters thick, you can use it. There are other things that are seven millimeters thick. Any of those will work. Okay. For the RAM, it's probably Patriot or Corsair. Yeah, Patriot, Corsair, whatever makes, whoever makes the fastest. So dim. That's the DDR3, 1600 megahertz. Zikaji. What kind of a name is Zikaji? Did you guys just make these names to see how, see what, if I screw up when I say them? All right. Uh, at around nine minutes, you talk about replacing HDD. With an SSD, do I have to unscrew any parts of the SSD if it is 7 millimeters? No, you do not. Also, why won't Norton Ghost work? And uh, do you guys have a guide for Clonezilla? No, we don't have a guide for Clonezilla yet. There's another program you can use, not Clonezilla. What's it called? There's another really good program that, 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 that I, I used it last time. Um, Norton Ghost doesn't like the UEFI BIOS system just yet. Maybe there's a new version out, but our version did not like the UEFI BIOS at all. So when Windows tried to start, it was like, Oh, God, what's this? I don't know, said Norton Ghost. What are we going to do? Uh, nothing. Yeah, the, the thing was with... That dramatization. The thing with modern Windows is that there's a there's actually a boot partition. Like, when, if you, when you install Windows and you do a fresh hard drive and it creates that system-reserved 100 meg partition, that's mm -hmm. actually your boot partition. And a lot of programs seem to have problems with that in the UEFI scenario. Yeah. I had another question that's not on here, but I wanted to, to mention it. Someone asked if you could run dual monitors with this. 
Uh, yes, you can run all three monitors at the same time, meaning this display. Uh, you can have like, we had all three of these going at the same time and they all work just fine. And one other question that someone asked was that, it, can you run two monitors with this unit closed and just use this as sort of like a desktop replacement, set it on the desk and go with two, you know, two monitors, have a mouse and keyboard and everything. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Just close it up uh, and um, while you're booting, close the unit. If you close the unit while it's on, depends on how you have it configured, but we have it configured to go to sleep when you close the unit. So that's the way most of you guys will be doing it. So yes, that was the end of that video. That's a lot of questions. Oh, uh, battery life. Uh, uh, yes. Um, uh, so yeah, just informal testing, using it for work stuff. You get about five hours, give or take. Um, it's surprising. You can, uh, like I've got Dropbox and stuff like that running in the background. If you kill all that and turn off the keyboard backlight and turn the brightness down all the way, and do some other little things like there's a there's an option in the video driver like by default asus has it configured for a 40 hertz refresh when you're on the intel hd 4000 for the desktop and most people change that but i'm getting like an extra 30 45 minutes of power uh out of the laptop if i turn it down to 40 hertz and you know 40 I, hertz i mean can you notice much difference unless you're playing video and stuff yeah no not really and so that that gets up in around like the six towards seven hours of, of battery life i haven't experienced seven hours of battery life with this yet but i'm getting well into the six hour range with with those little tweaks nice so a lot of good things to know there asus zen book is uh, quite nice asus send us some more stuff to test out please um you guys can email me inbox at techsyndicate.com uh, i've answered a lot of these questions uh, a lot of the future ones, I'm going to refer you to the forum just because I'm getting lots of questions about everything. I can't get to everyone, so I'm sorry if, I, if it takes me a little while to get back to you. Sometimes people, like, they'll email me, and then two days later they'll be hostile. Where the hell are you, man? Well, I don't work for you. I try as hard as I can, guys, and I love you all. We created the forum so you can help yourselves. Yeah. I mean, I do like the questions because these, these videos are fun. So if you have a question that you think may be good on the air, you know, like... If I'm trying to upgrade my RAM and my dog bites me, what happens? Because that'd be fun to talk about. It really happens. I read about it on Fox. Dogs on Fox. Story at 11. That's enough of this. All right, let's go play with our four and a half inch floppies. <laughs> <laughs>